This is transparent. It cannot be seen with the naked eye. However, many creatures and plants rely on it. One Korean poet called it the silent cry. It is the wind. The winter winds of Poang create many legendary tastes. If the Korean Peninsula's appearance is likened to a tiger, Pohang in North Gyeongsang Province is located on the tiger's tail. Pohang is known as the City of Steel. POSCO, the world's third largest steel-making company, is based here. Kuryongpo is named after a legend of how nine dragons ascended to heaven. Here, a unique sight unfolds every winter. Racks and racks of fish drying in the winds. This is Pacific Sori, the main ingredient of Kwamegi. 15,000 tons of Pacific Sori is used to make Kwamegi every winter in Pohang. The kwamegi produced here account for 80% of all the kwamegi made nationwide. In the past, a lot of Pacific sori and herrings were caught off the coast of Kuryongpo. The catch decreased radically with the changing water temperature, but that didn't deter a culinary custom of 200 years. Come winter, people get busy making kwamegi. They remove the organs and bones of Pacific sori and leave it to dry for three days. What makes Kwamegi is the wind. The cold and dry northwesterly winds from the land and the humid winds from the sea meet, presenting ideal drying conditions. Sales of Kwamegi in Kuryongpo total 100 billion won each year. While Kwamegi is also produced elsewhere along the East Sea, there's a reason why Kwamegi made in Kuryongpo is considered the best. Kuryongpo stands at the end of the Tebek mountain range, which runs parallel to the eastern coast of Korea. The winds from the land and from the seas cross through Kuryongpo, creating the ideal conditions for drying greasy Pacific sori. Kwamegi is high in vitamin A, iron and calcium. Also, during the drying process, the amount of nucleic acids doubles. When day turns to night, the winds change. The power of the wind surpasses human technology. It is thanks to the wind that there are other memorable tastes in Pohang. 
workers unwind at the end of a day with kwamegi and some alcohol. <laughs> kwamegi is enjoyed as a wrap with a variety of vegetables such as green onions, garlic and chili pepper. As kwamegi became more mainstream, people found different ways to eat it. In winter in Pohang, cold land winds and warm sea winds clash ceaselessly. The boundaries of the winds have histories that date back many millennia. Relics from the Stone and Bronze Ages, as well as historic sceneries, make up Pohang's most valuable assets. It's time to wait for the sunrise. Sunrise at Homi Cape represents Pohang's many sights. Fishing ships that head out to the southeastern seas moor at Kuryongpo Harbour. The harbour was small and quiet until the 1910s, but grew rapidly during the Japanese colonial era in order for the Japanese to better exploit marine resources. Today, it's the largest harbour in North Kyongsang province. Snow crabs are the most welcome visitors in winter. More than half of all snow crabs sold nationwide come from Kuryongpo Harbour. Here are freshly hauled crabs. An auction is about to begin. Customers come from all over Korea to buy snow crabs caught in Kuryongpo. Snow crabs live around 200 to 800 meters below sea level in the North Pacific Ocean. In Korea, they can be found along the east coast. They're usually caught in early winter, but those caught near the end of winter or in early spring are more taut and tastier. As kwamegi season winds down, snow crab season picks up. The Korean name for snow crab, tege, comes from how the crab's legs are as stiff as bamboo or tenamu. Many visitors to Pohang fall in love with this white flesh of bamboo. If snow crabs are meant for visitors, mulhwe is meant for fishermen who have lived all their lives in Kuryongpo. It's a quick meal prepared by mixing raw fish with vegetables and chili pepper paste. Always pressed for time, the fishermen cannot sit down for a proper meal. Hence, quick and nutritious mulhe takes care of their needs. <laughs> Oh, 
바쁘니까 빨리 먹는 방법으로 이래서 이제 물에 우레를 해가 먹다가 그 이제 물회를 해가 먹다가 이제 물회를 막 가지고는 배가 다안 차니까 여기다 밥을 놓고 밥을 놔서 이렇게 말아 예. 이래서 이제 한끼 한끼 끼니를 외우는 거예요 예. 배 사람들은 예. 아이고 다 나가 마침 대리가 잡아 놓은 거 대강으로 잡아 놓은 거 No one knows when the dish came to be, but it has been enjoyed for decades. Today, Mulhwe is one of the icons of Pohang. It is not only fishermen who enjoy Mulhwe. Even visitors to Pohang are enticed by the refreshing and spicy taste of Mulhwe. <laughs> what emerged from fishermen's hard labor developed into a mainstream dish. The chef expertly cuts raw fish and prepares hue. The soup base of mulhe has been left to mature for a long time to acquire a deep taste. Jeongbok gaebul hesam mongye sora mo sonni wonashin deo deri su deo ko aniyeon bopeon jeogoro jeodeol jeogeso nagaeun go deo pilaeun go eumsege ire bibeoso bibimbap cheolong deo bibeoso. 이제 육수가 최고 메인이 육수거든요. 육수로 해서 이제 좀 맛있게 비벼 드실 수 있는 먹는 김도 좋고 맛도 좋고. Within Kuryongpo lies a compound where Japanese people used to live during the occupation era. Some 70 years have passed, but the houses still stand. The Japanese buildings present a peculiar experience to visitors who have never lived through the occupation era. However, for those who have, the empty buildings manifest memories that are as vivid as the present. <laughs> There's a reason as to why the Japanese settled in Pohang. The waterways between Pohang and Hokkaido connect through the North Korean current and the East Korean current. The Japanese took the bountiful marine resources of Pohang as if they belonged to Japan. They mainly caught herrings because herring oil was critical for the expansion of the Japanese Empire. Jungle, jungle, 
식료도 했지만은 주로 뭐 염량했다든가 뭐 이래가지고 식료는 안 하고 전부 그게 했습니다. 저, 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 비를 만들었거든요. This was the site of a large scale herring processing plant. Today, it's Chukdo Market. It's the largest traditional market in all of Korea, as big as 20 soccer fields put together. There are about 3,400 shops and stalls inside. The vendors have always put up with the cold winds to guard their place. Of all the different marine products sold here, sunfish stands out the most. Cutting apart a three to four meter sunfish is almost like breaking apart a boulder. The scientific term for sunfish, mola mola, means a millstone in Latin. It is a reference to the disc-like shape of the fish. Sunfish has been consumed in Pohang for a very long time. Sales of some fish are banned in the European Union, but it's considered a delicacy in Korea, Japan and Taiwan. The hard flesh is cut and boiled in water first. This softens the meat to a clear jelly-like form. <laughs> In the past, some fish was eaten to stave off hunger. Now, it's served on special occasions. It's the food that represents the people and the community of Pohang. The change in winds brings a change in culinary customs. It may not be visible, but the wind creates legendary tastes. The green fields of Pohang are gifts of the wind. This place looks very dated. In fact, it is Poang's oldest noodle factory, standing for 42 years now. The machines still operate at the speed of 42 years ago. Pohang used to be home to many small-scale noodle makers because of its local specialty, mori noodles. 
A 70-year-old woman dries the noodles made by a 40-something-year-old machine. The dry land wind and the humid sea breeze take turns drying the noodles. Mori noodles are thicker and more flat than regular noodles. They have deep ties with Pohang's bountiful marine resources. Mori noodles are made with unsold seafood. The warm eastern current that passes through the Pohang seas has created another legendary taste of Pohang. Here in the Korean capital of steel, there's a force that's stronger than steel. The wind has blown for centuries, and in it, the people of Pohang have found wisdom and work. As long as the wind blows, the legend of the wind will continue.